Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Faith Greater Than Fear. My name is Mike Schrage. I'm here in Joplin, Missouri. And since March, we have had the opportunity to talk to two people a week. They are people of faith. They're men and women near, far, and even international. We're saying how we're coping with our families and in this season in our community with COVID and beyond. And so I've got a real honor uh, today to introduce to you my daughter, Carissa Shragi, Carissa Christian now. Carissa, welcome. Thank you. Thanks She's in California. Tell us a little about yourself, yes. your family. Our audience wants to get to know you like I do. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for having me, Dad. This is fun. So uh, I am... I live in Folsom, California, Northern California. I'm married. I have uh, a two-year-old and a four-month-old. Um, and I am a licensed clinical psychologist. So I work uh, for a large uh, medical company out here. Um, I have my PhD, my doctorate degree in clinical psychology, and I uh, specialize in working with children and families and adolescents. So I love it. So you're a mom and four months old. We can yeah. do the math. Tell us <laughs> that happened this year. So how was that for all those moms out there and dads that have had little ones and expecting little ones? What did you experience and what uh, words of encouragement can you give to them? Yeah, you know, I think it was, it's definitely different. Um, as soon as the pandemic kind of hit, you know, going to all the doctor visits by myself, wearing a mask, um, certainly being at the hospital, there was kind of a bittersweetness, not being able to have any visitors. Um, so definitely, I think for a lot of families having to kind of mourn the loss maybe of how they had hoped the experience had been, you know, I think especially for first time parents, um, when you're experiencing it for the first time, luckily for us, we, we kind of knew <laughs> a little bit more what to expect. So that helps. But, um, you know, it, I, it, it was, it was tough, but I have to say like our medical, you know, our medical professionals, they're heroes. God has just blessed us and, you know, our country with great medical staff. And I think the, you know, nursing staff just stepped in and we're so kind. So I guess my biggest encouragement would be that you're going to be okay. <laughs> they're going to take care of you. They're going to take extra care of you. Um, their number one priority is you and your baby. And, it's going to look a little different when you come home. You may not be able to have the amount of visitors that you want, or you may have to struggle with um, setting boundaries if you need to, you know, boundaries. But but don't be afraid to just kind of listen to your gut and do what you feel is right for your family and for the safety of your baby. Um, and it's and it'll be okay. And it's so true, Christian, isn't it, that we, we are concerned about our medical care here and about COVID. But we are in a very good environment. And while the infection rates are very high, the recovery rates are very high also yeah. for those. And I like what you said about the, the element of, of a loss. And you get to talk to a lot of people. That's your job, your ministry, your vocation. So we move from being a wife and a mommy of two little ones. Tell us how it is when you've got a husband who works from home, you're having to work from home. How do you balance? That's the big word, isn't it? For all I think you, you do balance young families. <laughs> <laughs> There's no balance here. Um, you know, I, I, it, was, it was pretty brutal in March when I was in my last trimester and our daughter's daycare shut down. We're both working from home full time, trying to take care of our almost two year old at the time. And, you know, I have to give credit to my husband because he um, his work is a little more flexible. And so he really took the helm and, um, you know, taking care of her and then staying up late, catching up. And uh, she got to watch a little more TV than usual. And I think that's what the balance is. You know, it's kind of saying, look, things are going to look a little different. You know, she's going to get a little more technology. We're going to get a little less sleep. <laughs> Um, but at the end of the day, if we can have those moments of connection, it, uh, again, it, it, it's, it'll be okay. And I think that was something that we actually enjoyed was as hectic as it was, as unbalanced as it felt, um, you know, we had lunch together every day, or I could pause and like, 
nap her and read books to her and then get my paperwork done later. And those were kind of sweet moments to have before a new baby kind of disrupted everything. <laughs> so, you know, trying to find those little glimmers of, um, of just gratitude and, and those little moments of, hey, this, we wouldn't have had this um, if it weren't for the pandemic. So those can kind of help recalibrate, we provide an ounce of balance, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> ounce of balance saying don't try to just go through from this nap to this time to this time if you can find those moments and just cherish that moment exactly and, or find that community as a family for a moment that's that's a god-given gift in the midst of some of the rush and in the midst of trying to find that balance so we hear this about yourself and about things in California a bit and about your wonderful husband. Tell us a little bit more about before you became mom times two here, uh, your profession is one in which there's a lot of listening and a lot mm -hmm. of advising and counseling. How did all that change with COVID? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'm a therapist. I meet with people face to face. I meet with kids face to face. Um, we know that the number one predictor of a good therapeutic relationship and a good therapeutic outcome, meaning people are happy with their therapy and then they feel like it's accomplished their goals and what they've wanted, is that relationship. And it's really hard to form and sustain a relationship through electronics. I mean, we're created for connection. And um, as grateful as we are to have so much social media and to have the ability to connect electronically, it changes things. So, you know, it's really changed our industry. We've had to reevaluate, you know, the ethics of <laughs> meeting with people online, how to, how to engage people online, um, how to keep, how to help parents stay engaged when they're trying to balance everything else and, and how to help their kids. So I think it's, it's been a real struggle. The, the upside, not to be Pollyanna-ish Pollyanna here, but you know, the upside is that I think some people who have maybe been afraid of mental health services um, because of the stigma associated of, of going to an office building or sitting underneath a sign, you know, now they can access those without anyone knowing it from the comfort of their home or people who are afraid of leaving their home or afraid of interaction. For some people, having this video has been a really nice tool for them to maybe get services that they otherwise wouldn't have. Um, or for people who, you know, location, they would love to see someone, but it's a two hour drive. Um, you know, we live I live close to a, a pretty rural, hilly area. And so it is kind of an access issue sometimes for people to get services. So I think that's been the silver lining, um, but it's definitely been a challenge to try to, to try to help people. You know, I think people are needing help and trying to find ways to help through this medium as much as we can. I love what you said about, and isn't it interesting we do that? We have these stigmas over certain things and, Again, this has been a time when this can be addressed and it can be overcome. And the least common denominator of a screen, like you said, can begin to melt down that barrier and that stigma and let them do that as well as access. What are you noticing? <clears throat> and I know you're, you're just getting back in after maternity leave here, but very attuned in the industry. What are you noticing in our country and in our season in the general population that uh, you would like to say, we need to be aware of this people, particularly getting into holiday times. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to be aware of. You know, I think we've all heard it and we all feel it. I, I think it's that pandemic fatigue. You know, I think people, their hope is a beautiful thing and hope can also be the biggest defeater because I think through this pandemic, people had hope, oh, July, things will be better this summer. Oh, this, it will be better. After the election, it will be better. Uh, and this is why we put our hope in things not seen, but things unseen, because if we put our hope in things seen, we'll constantly feel defeated. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think um, there is a real concern about the rising rates of depression. We know that um, seasonal depression and seasonal anxiety increases in, in um, the winter months anyway, when it is harder to get out and move and be in nature. And so 
now when it's hard to get out and then you can't go indoors and you can't interact with people, it's, I think it's going to be really hard. So I would say, you know, this is a season where if you're someone that's struggling, um, you're not alone and it, it's okay. It's okay to be scared and lonely and feel overwhelmed and it's okay to ask for help. Um, and whether that's from a friend or a family member or pastoral staff or mental health professional, it's all okay. And if you're someone who who's doing okay, you know, then this is a season where uh, I would encourage you to just really reach out, you know, find those connections, see where you could serve, where you could be a support to someone and check in, because I think it's, it's going to be really hard um, for the next few months as we get to the holiday season for many people. And the words are social distance, but that's really a misnomer, isn't it? It should mm -hmm. be physical distance because we are social beings. We yeah. are there to be connected and to be in family and in community. And so kind of the buddy system is more important now than ever, whether that's with systems, uh, whether that's with family or community or siblings. Um, we know somebody that's uh, out of work right now who wouldn't have been, who is ill right now, who wouldn't have been, Absolutely. who lost someone, who wouldn't have been. Those are all losses. Tell us a little bit about all the different kinds of losses. How can I, as a good buddy to somebody else, help with this fatigue, with all the multiplicity of losses, and then in this end of year season, what would you give us some tips that I should be able to think about? Yeah, offer? I think, you know, these are going to be generic tips. So obviously, um, if you need more specific tips, you know, seek out a, a, a professional who can give you kind of really individualistic advice, you know, and tailor it to your specific needs. But in general, you know, I think... Um, I go back to the old uh, airplane analogy where you need to put your oxygen on first before you put your oxygen on your child. And I think that's how you can be the biggest servant to other people is making sure that first and foremost, you're replenishing yourself. Um, and, and then you're seeking out to help others. So, you know, when it comes to serving others, I think just being really straightforward about, Hey, what are your needs? What can I do? Not being afraid to just ask that, blunt question, even if it feels awkward, because people will tell you and people appreciate that bluntness, you know? Um, and I think, you know, as a new mom, like I know things I've appreciated are when people just say, Hey, I'm going to target. What can I get for you and drop off for you? You know, Hey, I'm making soup. I'm going to make an extra batch and drop it off at your door. You know, things like that, where people, because sometimes when you're in the middle of a loss, you don't really know how to articulate what you need. Or when you're feeling overwhelmed, it's hard for you to pinpoint this would be helpful. Um, or when you're grieving something, it, it can be hard hard to even know. So I think sometimes, you know, not being afraid to just kind of assume and drop things off, that's okay. Um, and then in terms of taking care of yourself, you know, one of my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into teaching mode here, but one of my favorite uh, little coping skills is called BOLD. It's an acronym for what you can do. And so this is, this is something that is really helpful in those moments when you're feeling really overwhelmed, whether you're feeling overwhelmed with wanting to help someone or you're feeling overwhelmed yourself and you're experiencing a really uncomfortable, intense emotion. Um, and I encourage people to be bold in those moments. And so what that means is the B stands for breathe. And I know it's so cliche for a mental health professional to be telling you to breathe. I got it, I know how to breathe. Yes, exactly. Um, the key to this breath um, is that you want to exhale longer than you inhale. And that's because it helps recalibrate your system. You know, the science behind that is that when we're feeling a really intense emotion, our amygdala and our limbic system is activated um, and it deactivates our frontal lobe, which helps us make decisions and helps us be flexible and problem solve. And so breathing helps us really just calm and soothe our nervous system. Um, and then the O stands for observe and observe is just taking stock of how are you feeling? Our emotions are data. A lot of times we want to pretend that we don't have emotions or we want to ignore them, but we're given emotions for a reason. They give us information. Um, maybe we're feeling angry and angry is a complex emotion because it's usually covering up a deeper, more vulnerable emotion, loneliness, isolation, grief, sadness. 
So we want to just observe how are we feeling? That's the O. L is listen to your values. Um, you know, what, what am I valuing here and how can I let my emotions align with my values? Because a life lived in accordance with your values is a life well lived. Um, and then D is decide upon your action. What course do I want to take? So I think, you know, in those moments, being bold, um, breathing, observing how you're feeling, listening to your values, you know, as a Christian, probably many of your values are going to be the fruits of the spirit love, joy, peace, patience. Okay. Now how can I act in in, in alignment to honor my feelings, but also connect them with my values um, and then decide upon an action to take with that. Um, I think that's a skill that can be helpful to anyone in any uncomfortable moment. Well, prejudiciously as a smart and beautiful daughter and wife and mommy of two, as we kind of close our time together, it's way too short, way too fast. I'd love mm-hmm. to hear some more of those advices. Uh, hey, folks, be bold. Yes. Is what would you say as the lady of faith? What would you say in closing in this season? What What would you want to say to people that uh, is from your heart and from your experiences? Yeah, you know, I think something that has just been my mantra this year has been second Corinthians 4 18 right for we fix our eyes not what is seen but what is unseen for what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal and that's hard (laughs) it's really hard we live in an age of false certainty we think we can google anything and we do xyz and we'll and we'll get it and i think the pandemic is a real reminder of our fragility and how much we actually don't know Um, and it can feel overwhelming. So I think, I think the biggest thing I would say is it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to have those moments where you just feel like everything is piling on top of you. Um, have that moment, honor it, and then remember that there is the unseen. Um, so take what you can honor that emotion, look at the data as much as you can, then take a step back and and that's where we have that faith, that faith that is greater than that fear. Um, and and we fixate on what is unseen and we go forth knowing that God is going to honor that. Carissa, Christian, thank you for your time today with our audience. If you've enjoyed, like I have, this episode of Faith Greater Than Fear, I'm sure you know someone else that would as well. So use your social media connections and your channels, share it with them, would you? And we have a podcast version as well. And so from us here in Dauphin, Missouri to Carissa out in California, Chris and I wanna say thank you very much for you tuning in and hoping that your day is a great one and that your faith will be greater than your fear and that you'll be bold as Mm -hmm. Carissa has told us to be. Carissa, thank you very much. Have a great day. God's blessings to all of you. Bye-bye.